Now we have some problems where we are graphing linear equations in two variables. The graph will be a straight line on the coordinate plane. It is a line that is made up of all the points that are ordered pair solutions to the equation. Since all these points line up, we only need to find a few and then we'll be able to see exactly where the line goes. There are several strategies for graphing linear equations. At first, we're focusing on finding ordered pair solutions. We came up with a strategy in the last video on how to find ordered pair solutions. We'll choose different values for one variable, one at a time we'll put those values into the equation, and solve to see the value of the other variable. To help organize my work, I'll be using a table. The way I set up my table is that I have a column for x values and a column for y values. This big space in the middle is just where I'm going to show my work. I'll even rewrite the equation y equals 2x plus 3. Notice that this equation is solved for y. The y is all by itself on the left side of the equation. And an equation that is solved for y is set up very nicely to put values in place of x and evaluate to see the value of y. So we'll choose values for x. Let's start with x equals 0. In the middle, I'm going to recopy this equation, but I'll put a 0 in place of x. y equals 2 times 0 plus 3. Let's simplify the right side of this equation. 2 times 0 is 0 plus 3, so y equals 3. And we'll put that result here in the y column. When x equals 0, y equals 3. And this corresponds to the ordered pair 0, 3. To be able to graph the line, we need to find a minimum of two points. And I think it's a good strategy to find at least three points, because that helps us make sure that our math is correct. If we plot three points and they don't line up in a straight line, we'd know that we made a mistake somewhere in our table. But if we only find two points and connect those two points with a line, there's no way to quickly see whether or not we made an error in our work. So three points is just my habit to make sure that I'm finding my points accurately, and that if I've made a mistake somewhere, I'll be able to see it because my three points will not land in a straight line. So we found the first solution, and now we'll choose another value for x. Let's keep it simple and choose x equals 1. Here we're rewriting the equation but putting 1 in place of x. 2 times 1 equals 2, and 2 plus 3 equals 5. When x equals 1, y equals 5. That will be another ordered pair solution that we plot. Let's find one more point. We could choose 2, we could choose negative 1. I'm going to choose negative 2. Some people recommend a strategy where we don't choose x values that are all right next to each other, because that just helps our strategy of seeing when our points don't line up. If the points are right next to each other, it's sometimes difficult to see if we've made an error or not, that it might look like they line up, but they actually don't. So I'm not going to choose a positive 2, I'll choose a negative 2 and it will give points that are a little bit more spaced out and easy for us to see if they do line up. So let's take care of the middle, y equals 2 times negative 2 plus 3. And keep in mind that each time we're working in the middle, we are recopying this equation exactly, just differing what number we put in place of x. We started by putting a 0 in place of x, and then we used a 1, and now we are using negative 2. But I still have 2 times x plus 3. 2 times negative 2 plus 3. We'll simplify. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And then still add 3. That will give us y equals negative 1. So there's our third ordered pair solution, negative 2, negative 1. Now that we have ordered pair solutions, we're going to plot those points. First, 0, 3, horizontally 0, and then up, 1, 2, 3. Next point, 1, 5, over 1, up 5. Our last point was negative 2, negative 1, from the origin to the left 2, and down 1. And our three points do line up in a straight line. To finish making the graph, 
will draw the straight line right through those points. If you're doing it on paper, you should be using a ruler. We'll put an arrowhead on this line because it does extend forever. Let's also label these axes X and Y. That's a good strategy, a good habit. And it's also good to put our scale for this graph, that each box equals 1. Those are good things to include. But there is the graph of this equation. Y equals 2X plus 3. I'll just write it next to the line as a label. This line is the graph of this equation. We found a few ordered pairs, saw that they lined up, so we draw a straight line through those points, and there's the graph. Just a quick reminder that the other ordered pairs that we see on this line that maybe we didn't find in the table would still be more ordered pair solutions. Like this point here is at 3, 9. If we went to our table and chose a value of x equals 3, I'm going to squeeze it in down here. If x equals 3, this equation becomes y equals 2 times 3 plus 3. And simplify 6 plus 3, so y equals 9. Exactly that point that we found on our line. So any point that we find on the line will be an ordered pair solution just like the 3 and now 4 that we found so far. It includes integers and whole numbers and even decimals and fractions. Now here's a similar example for you to try. So pause the video to make the graph of this equation. Use the same setup that we've been using so far and remember it does not matter exactly which values you choose for x. Just choose numbers that you think will be easy for you to work with. So pause the video and try it and now we'll go through the answer together. I've set up my table, a column for x, space in the middle to work, and then a column for the result y. First I'll choose x equals 0. That's usually my favorite first choice because negative 2 times 0 equals 0. For now I'll keep writing that we're substituting 0 in place of x and I'll still point out how quickly this simplifies this expression that all we're left with is 5. But we'll get to a point where we can see that if x equals 0, it's going to wipe out this entire term, and we'll just be left with the constant. In this case, it's positive 5. So there's our first ordered pair solution. Let's actually plot it this time, right away. 0, 5, so horizontally 0, and then up 5. Let's keep things organized for our next ordered pair, and I'll choose x equals 3. It's okay if my ordered pair solutions don't match up with the ones that you chose, because once we have the line graphed, we'll make sure that we've all found ordered pair solutions that are on the line, and that we all have the same looking line. It doesn't matter exactly which three ordered pairs we choose, because they should all line up on the very same straight line. So we'll see that once we have all of our points plotted. Next, x equals 3. So the equation y equals negative 2 times 3 plus 5. Simplifying the multiplication, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, plus 5 equals negative 1. Let's plot that ordered pair over 3 and negative 1, so we're going down 1. Let's get our third ordered pair, and this time I'll choose x equals negative 2, just for fun y equals negative 2 times negative 2 plus 5. And take a look at our table. We consistently see the equation rewritten just choosing different values for x. And keep those values when we substitute them in, keep them in parentheses to really make it clear that all the other parts of the equation are the same. Multiply by negative 2 and add 5. Down here, when we do the multiply, negative 2 times negative 2 equals positive 4. And adding 5 gives us positive 9. That third point, we have to go to the left 2 and then up 9. It's good that our three points do line up on the same straight line. If they didn't, if we had some sort of a corner in those three points, that's an indication that our math is not correct somewhere in the table. So you'll need to go back and double check your work here in the middle. And this graph looks good because all of our points line up on the same straight line. There is our graph, a couple of arrowheads, 
to show this line goes forever, even to very negative numbers or very large positive numbers. Let's label the axes x and y and throw our scale in here also. Each box corresponds to one unit. So there's the graph of our line y equals negative 2x plus 5. Now we'll look at more examples that are a little bit trickier, but we want to really understand and embrace this process that we have so far. It's pretty smooth going through this table, just choosing different values for x and, and doing the math to find y. And a big part of that is because our equation is solved for y. So the next few problems we'll look at, we'll be starting with an equation that is not solved for y. And what we will choose to do is solve that equation for y, so that when we get to the table, we find the same smooth process of evaluating because the equation is solved for y. All of our work will be just on the right side of the equation, and we'll end up with the value for y. Now I did mention earlier that we were going to make sure that if you found ordered pairs that were different from mine, that they would still be correct. Hopefully your line has the same appearance as mine, that it's going downhill, we could say, and when we talk about uphill, downhill, we're thinking about starting on the left side of the line. So starting on this side, it would definitely be going downhill as we go from left to right. So hopefully you also have a downhill line. But let's check some of these ordered pairs. We can see a point right here, which represents x equals 1 and y equals 3. So if you used x equals 1, it would give you the ordered pair 1, 3. Here's another point, it's at 2, 1. So if you chose x equals 2, you would have an ordered pair at 2, 1. If you chose a negative 1 for x, there's the ordered pair right there. It's at negative 1, 7. So that fills in the integer values that we have here around 0. Numbers just a, l a few bigger than 0 and a few less than 0, talking about our x values. So hopefully if you chose any of those values for x, you came up with these ordered pair solutions. And even if you went a little bit extreme, like this point down here, it is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for x, and y down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so that's negative 7. There's even another ordered pair solution, because it's a point on the line. 